Hello my friends, HM here. I make videos about topics that matter as for whether the future of humanity will be better or worse. Today's video is my second take on my video number 4 that investigates how a drone weapon called Shahid has the potential to decide who win the war in Ukraine. This Shahid drone has this potential because it can be mass produced in the same way we make automobiles but at much lower cost because it is far less complex and heavy than an automobile. This second take on the topic should be more interesting as I've now included ideas for how Elon Musk's SpaceX could improve and produce the Shahid weapon to make it truly revolutionary for future warfare. It should also be noted that today's video is just two chapters out of my longer video number 7 with 8 chapters. Video number 7 goes deeper into how SpaceX could make the Shahid drone even better and augment it with autonomous AI capability and communication abilities from its Starlink constellation and also by making another constellation of spy satellites to support target acquisition and evaluation. There is a link to my longer video number 7 right below this video. With that said, let's get to it. Chapter 2. What is the Shahid drone? Let's first start by looking at the drone specifications. The Shahid is an attack drone made by an Iranian company called HESA, an official entered service in the Iranian army in December 2021. But actually the Shahid specs and also the look of this drone is very similar to an Israeli drone called Harpy from that was made back in 1989 uh, and there's a picture down here of it and I believe that, that this company is really company who made this drone actually sold blueprint for it back in 2005 to an Iranian company so they have been then using that to develop this Shahid drone and maybe the Israelis shouldn't have sold that blueprint but I guess the Iranians would have figured it out anyway because it's not that complicated to build this drone. Current Iranian production capacity is 150 units per month and the buyers of it now is Russia that has bought 2400 of them for use against Ukraine but they haven't gotten them all at once. They are Iran could give them what they had in stock and then they're giving them batches as they produce more of them. The weight of this drone is 200 kilo with a 45 kilo warhead which is pretty big warhead and why this drone is dangerous. <laughs> For comparison, the HIMARS warhead is 120 kilo and the rocket is 300 kilo. The HIMARS is an American-made rocket launcher system that Ukraine has used with great success in the war because it's a precision weapon. But this Shahid is also a precision weapon, also uses GPS. The size of the Shahid is 3.5 meters long and a wingspan of 2.5 meters wide. Again, for comparison with HIMARS, that's 22.7 centimeters wide and nearly 4 meters long. And the flight height for the Shahid is between 60 and 4,000 meters. The 4,000 meters is important because of that height, most anti-aircraft guns cannot reach it. The cruising speed is not high, it's 185 kilometers per hour. The HIMARS speed for comparison is 3062 kilometers per hour and that's one of the reasons that the Russians haven't been able to shoot it down. It simplifies very fast and it's very hard to hit with an anti-aircraft rocket. Whereas the Shahid is much easier to hit because it's so slow. The range of this Shahid is 1000 kilometer and it has been postulated that it can even be 2500 kilometers. I think if, if there's any truth to that, I don't think there is, then of course it could only be done with a much smaller warhead. The high mass range is 70 kilometers for the version Ukraine got, so significantly shorter range. Then the propulsion of this Shahid drone, and also I'll talk a little bit about frame and body, because it's important for understanding why it costs so little to make. Uh, the propulsion is a low-tech propeller design using an old combustion engine, 50 horsepower engine developed by Volkswagen that used it in the Volkswagen Beetles from 1936 to 2006. So it's a very old and very tested design that served Volkswagen well and now it serves the Iranian 
army. And this engine there has actually been available from China. China produces this engine and they sold it on a website, but it has gone black from that website. You can no longer find it. But it shouldn't be a difficult engine to remake in an alternative factory. So I'm sure that Russia, both Russia and uh, Iran can can remake that engine. It'll just be more expensive for them than if they could order it from China. The Iranian Shahid frame and body use a lot of composite materials that are not suited for mass production of this drone by the tens or even hundreds of thousands per month. And you can see it uses composite body from this fragment of, of the wing here that has broken off in a pattern that only can be from composite materials. Had it been built by metal sheets, it would have been twisted and not look like this. So a design that use stamped metal sheets and also a metal frame that is needed if you want to mass produce this drone here by the tens or hundreds of thousands per month. And a metal drone would of course have higher weight so the range will take a toll. And I would estimate that if you do it in metal the range will go down from the 1000 that was possible with the Iranian drone to probably 600 kilometers. But Iran's need for range is higher and that might explain why they have used a composite body because Iran's arc enemy is Israel and Iran would like to strike Israel so they probably had a requirement for the engineers when they designed this drone that it should have a really long range. And then I have some sources attribution to for previous slides. Let's take a look at the takeoff. So the Iranian Shahid drone allegedly takes off using an expendable solid propelled rocket mounted below. You can see the mount here and you can see in this picture that there's a rocket exhaust here and it kind of flies directly out of a, a truck here. But I think one improvement that could be done by SpaceX that would be better than this rocket propelled launcher system is to make a catapult launcher that is powered by a powerful electric motor that is winding up a pull cable for the drone. Of course it has to be a very powerful motor because the drone is 100 kilo and you need to accelerate it to 185 kilometers per hour within say 6-7 meters. But it's doable and such a catapult would save cost because you wouldn't need the launch rocket and also has a much smaller thermal signature because spy satellites can pick up the heat from a rocket launch and the enemy could use that to pinpoint your location and start counterfiring on it. My suggestion would be that this electric catapult launcher system would need to fit a standard 40-foot shipping con container for minimizing battlefield logistic hurdles and I think that should be easily doable. It's also very important to think about logistic whenever you design a product, a war machine, that it's also easy to maintain and operate uh, from a logistic point of view because wars are sometimes won by great logistics and not so much by other things. And then another improvement that SpaceX could do with this drone is that they could have an alternative launch mode that could be uh, using simply a landing gear that also mounts on the same mount that the rocket is mounted on. And that landing gear could either be used for launching, of course, the drone on a paved road, just by starting the engine and let it roll along that road and then let it take off. And if it has a landing gear, it can, of course, also land so it can be reusable. Well, that's a very useful feature of having a landing gear option. But it could also, if range is really important and, and you don't expect it to be reused, then you can just drop off the landing gear right after launch to have maximum range. Then I have this little video here I'll show you about how the Iranian Shahid presumably is, is taking off. So here we have it. It comes up from this truck. Here you can see it a little better. And here it actually attacks something and you can see it's a very powerful explosion. Okay, and then we reach chapter 3. Why is the Shahid drone so great? The first thing that is so obvious is the low manufacturing cost of this drone compared to other weapons. Um, Shahid only weights 200 kilo, and it's far simpler to build than a cheap automobile 
that weighs like 1.2 ton if it's made in metal like an automobile. I'd estimate that a 200 uh, kilo composite drone like the Iranian one that's likely distributed with those 45 kilo for the warhead that we know about and then perhaps uh, 100 kilo for the fuel and then 55 kilo that would be the remaining weight and that's for building the drone itself and if you make it in metal it it's more likely that okay we'll still have a 45 kilo warhead and it will still be 200 kilo for the total drone loaded with fuel but then it will have only 60 kilo of fuel so that's why I estimate, you know, it goes from 1,000 kilometers of range when it's in composite to about 600 kilometers in range if, if you make it in a metal because it has 40% less fuel. And then the rest of the drone will be 95 kilo for the drone itself. Well, I've made an estimate that the Shahid drone uh, will cost about 60,000 US dollar in low volume production when it's mostly hand built. And that's the Iranian version. The reason is composites takes a lot of time to build. You have to make a form, then you have to put some textile, carbon fiber or some other fiber uh, in that form. And then you pour over some resin, liquid resin, and then you have to bake that resin for it to harden. And it just takes a lot of time. It can take hours to make a, a single sheet. Now I want to show you how this can be done if you do it in a, an automotive factory style like shown here. Here we have an assembly line with a lot of robots that, and these cars are just running through here and they're being assembled and welded together by all these uh, robots. And down here we have a little video that shows how a stamping press are making the sheets that could go on the side of the car or that could make up the wings of, of this Shahid. So let's look at that. Here it goes in the sheet, it's pressed, and then a few seconds later it comes out in its shape. So this goes really fast and that's really affordable to make stuff like that. It will take hours to do the same thing in a composite material. And that's why I think the cost can, can go down to 6,000 US dollars if you make it like an automobile in metal. So that's one tenth the price of what the Iranians are using. But in order to set this kind of production up, you need to produce a lot of units or you won't be able to pay for the cost of all these expensive uh, robots and stamping presses and stuff. So you need to make a lot of them. Iran only make about 150 per month. But in this car manufacturing thing here, you'd have to make 30,000 per month. That's mass production for a car manufacturing factory. And they can even be bigger than that. They can also do 60,000 units per month. So you can definitely build a similar style factory and making these Shahid drones in metal and then get the price down to about 6,000 US dollars because a cheap automobile, you can build that for about $20,000 or that's the cheapest cars out there. And they're much more complex and will cost a lot more to, to manufacture. I have actually made a YouTube video before, it's my number four video, that goes a little more deep into the cost of making the Shahid and the engineering. I'm not going to talk more about that in this video because then there'll be too much overlap between these videos. So if you're super interested in cost and engineering, then go watch this uh, video. So why is the Shahid drone great? Uh, let's compare it with some of the other costs. If you have no idea what things cost, then this will be an eye opener. Uh, so the cost of a Shahid, SpaceX made Shahid with 600 kilometers range and 45 kilo warhead and a speed of 185 kilometers per hour. It will be about 6,000 US dollars. And let's compare that to this a cruise missile as standard US cruise missile. There's a picture of it here. It's called a Tomahawk cruise missile. It has 1,600 kilometers range. It has a 450 kilo warhead, so 10 times that of the Shahid, and it flies at 913 kilometers per hour. But it also costs 2 million US dollars, uh, and you can get 333 Shahids for the same price as one Tomahawk missile. Even if you say, okay, but the warhead is 10 times, so we'll have to divide this thing here with 10, you can still get 33 Shahids for every one Tomahawk you fire. So I'd say it has a lot more destructive power, the Shahid, than a Tomahawk missile. 
But of course, a Tomahawk missile is not obsolete. It has longer range. It's also harder to shoot down because it flies at a much higher speed at 900 km per hour. Then let's compare it to HIMARS, and there's a little picture here of this, the HIMARS system that the Ukraine has used successfully in their war against the Russians. It's a US-based rocket, and um, it only has 70 km range, but it has a 120 kilo warhead, and it flies at a much higher speed, almost 3,100 km per hour. That's very fast, and uh, so far the Russians have not been able to shoot it down using their same anti aircraft missiles, but it cost 110,000 US dollars, or the same as 18 Shahids. Here you could also say, well, the warhead is like three times larger, so divide those 18 Shahids with three. You'll still be, for the same bang, you can still get six times more Shahids than you can get this HIMARS missile. Plus, the Shahid will have a range of 600 kilometers. This one only flies 70 kilometers. That doesn't mean the Shahid will replace the HIMARS. The HIMARS will still be in demand. In fact, I think we'll use a lot more of them in the future because they have some advantages. You cannot shoot them down. You can shoot the Shahid down and also the Shahid is slow. So if you want to destroy a target you have identified and it has to be now, then you can fire a HIMARS if it's within the range of that HIMARS. Speed is sometimes very important in war. So it's not going to be obsolete, that weapon, because of a lot of cheap Shahids. But then there's another weapon here. That's the cost of a 155mm guided Excalibur artillery round with 70 km range. It's a heavy artillery shell and it's fired by a Haubitzer like this one. I think that's a Panzerhauser uh, 2000, the German thing. But that can fire that uh, shell. And 70 km range is, is a lot because it's actually a self-propelled shell. So you fire it out of this gun, plus it has some self-propulsion. But that also means the weight of the explosives in that grenade is only down to about 4 kilo. So it's one-tenth of the bang of the Shahid. And also range is far less. And then it costs 68,000 US dollars for this shell. That's enough to buy 11 Shahids. But it is guided. This Excalibur round is guided. It's GPS guided, so it can hit its target. But still, Shahid can also hit its target, and it's far more range, and it's a far bigger bang. So the next one here is the cost of a 155 millimeter standard artillery shell. That will be typically a 43 kilo shell, but and that it will have seven kilo of explosives. Again, you can say why so little explosives? It's because it it comes out of this barrel here with with 3,100 kilometers, so just as fast as this HIMARS uh, rocket, uh, even faster. And it needs a lot of metal to keep itself together uh, and not detonating the the dynamite that's inside the shell. So it's mostly metal and it's not guided. This shell here, it's completely dumb. It's just a, a shell and then you have a fuse that determines how it explodes. It could be a proximity fuse, so with a little radar in it. So when it's 10 meters or something above its target, it explodes. Or it could be simply a pressure fuse that has to hit something, the ground or a vehicle or something, and then it explodes. Because it's not guided, you have to shoot a lot of them to actually hit something. I'd say you you have to shoot about 100 before you hit something at that distance of 30 to 40 kilometers that it can actually shoot. So 100 times $1,000 for each shell, that's about 100,000 US dollars to hit something. And that again is you can buy 17 Shahids for that. That has a much bigger bang because they have a... That they have this uh, 45 kilo warhead and most of that will be dynamite because they don't need a lot of metal in that warhead because they're not shot out of a gun barrel so that they don't need a lot of metal to keep it keep the shell together and prevent it from exploding and then we have uh, the final thing i want to talk about is tanks and tank rounds nato tanks they use a 120 millimeter shell and typical tank shell cost about 4,000 US dollar. Then you can say, why does a tank shell cost $4,000? That's more expensive than the 1,000 for, for a bigger shell for the heavy artillery. It's because tank shells are typically armor piercing. So they're a little, made a little special with some directional explosion that shoots out a plasma that can go through 
a lot of armor. So they're a little more complicated to, to build. That's why they're more expensive. And then again, I estimate you need to fire about 10 times before you actually hit a target with a tank shell. So that would be about $40,000 before you hit something. Or the same as seven uh, Shahids that basically will hit their target every time unless they are shot down by some anti-aircraft guns or, or missiles. I, I wanted to give a little more reason here justification for why you need a hundred ordinary shells before you actually hit something. This is a picture of a field in Ukraine. It's actually taken from a satellite. And all these craters you see here are heavy artillery shells that have missed their target. They are landed in the field and not where they're supposed to hit. All the targets, they are hiding inside these tree lines here. There's a, a tree line here. And that's where all the tanks and armored fighting vehicles and all the soldiers have duck themselves down in some trenches and stuff and you try to hit these tree lines here because that's where you know the enemy is uh, located and, and you can see there's an enormous amount of shells that just doesn't hit their target and don't do any damage to the enemy. That's why you need a hundred before you can actually hit something. But let's move on. I have a lot of sources for what I just said here. So another reason why the Shahid is such a great build is that it uses a delta wing and the delta wing is a brilliant design because it's uh, more efficient than other kinds of aerodynamic designs it's the most efficient you can construct but it also has a problem if you have a slow flying delta wing as the Shahid is then you have some then you have an angle of attack when it goes through the wind that will give some turbulence that will create air drag and that will create inefficiencies but you can by putting these flaps on the wings you can diminish this air drag a lot that's just why they designed it like that you could say why don't we build every airplane as a delta wing when they're more efficient you can get more range from it it's, it's because if you have a commercial airline you'd like to have a large fuselage in the middle so this would be the fuselage and where you could put passengers or cargo into and then some wings that sticks out from there. Whereas if you have this delta wing, well, you won't have this large uh, fuselage. You just have one big wing and it's more difficult to design a, a passenger or cargo plane if you use this design. Also, a delta wing is harder to control than a traditional airplane. A traditional airplane is self-stabilizing in the air. So if an engine stops working or there's a lot of turbulence in the weather, it still flies very stable, whereas this uh, Delta Wing might actually crash. So that's why not all aircraft are built that like that. But frankly, if you ask me, I think in the future a lot more airplanes, even commercial and cargo airplanes, will be built like Delta Wings and also military planes because this about controlling the airplane so that it's stable in all kind of weather, you can do that with computers. They can control the airplane so that it will be just as safe as, as any other. And then, there's, of course, there's still this about how to get the passengers in. Well, build them bigger. Then you can stand up inside a Delta Wing. There's another problem. You won't have any windows uh, because it, the whole wing can be full of passengers or cargo and, and also fuel. So there won't be any windows. Only on the edge here can you put some windows for people to look out of. And maybe people don't like that. But I don't think that would be a problem either. You could, you could put some big screens in and, and then just fake a, a view out of the airplane with that. Anyway, let's keep on going here. Another reason why I think this is a great construction is they, they have simple affordable controls. Here you can see the engine is on the back and here we have a, an engine that has been ripped off from a drone that was shot down in Ukraine. And I think it sits here on a gimbal. So you can actually, with a gimbal, you can also control um, in which direction this engine is blowing the air from this propeller that it rotates. In this picture down here, you can see there are four flaps with four actuators here that control these flaps up and down. That's how you control it. So, and it's all cheap. A gimbal is cheap and these actuators are cheap. So it's a simple way to control it. So another reason that the Shahid drone here is great is that it has very affordable and also robust navigation. Of course, it needs to hit its target. How does it do it? 
Well, it uses a combination of satellite navigation that uses signals from publicly available satellite navigation systems like the US, it's called GPS, and EU, there's Galileo, with the Russian, GLONASS, and China is called Baidu. And all of these signals are publicly available. All these countries behind those networks also have military signals from the same networks that are even higher precision. And then it uses inertial navigation as well. And I'll talk a little about why that is smart. So if the satellite signal is jammed, the drone can still find its target using this inertial navigation that uses motion sensors, that is accelerometers, and also rotation centers, that's uh, gyroscopes, and a computer to calculate how its new position is given the last known satellite position and subsequent movement of the drone. These sensors are all measuring the movement of the drone. So if you know the large position of the drone, these accelerators can basically be used to compute where the drone is 10 minutes later because it has registered all this information about the drone. And you might say that sounds like something extremely expensive using these motion sensors and rotation sensors, gyroscopes and stuff. It's not expensive. Let me pick up a, a phone here, an iPhone. Every single smartphone has these sensors built in. When you take up your phone, a, a gyroscope registers that you have picked up your phone and your screen is, is ready to use and the face scanner starts because of that. So we have all these sensors built into the phones and you know, even expensive smartphones is like a thousand US dollars. And if you only need these sensors, they are like $10 a, a piece. You only need the chip for this particular kind of sensor so they are cheap and also the gps antenna it's also a very cheap chip it's like also a ten dollar thing if you buy them in larger numbers and then also some weapons may use for more precision they have a barometric al altimeter that measures uh, pressure in the air so to, in order to calculate how high up it is because the higher up you go the less the air pressure and and then there are also some speed sensors. Anyway, we know that this Iranian Shahid drone uses just the GPS signal and also these inertial navigation. And here I come with some numbers that says that if you don't jam it, if you don't cannot successfully jam it, then it will be at least able to hit its target with a precision of four meters, plus minus four meters, using a public available GPS signal. And if it has a military signal, then it will be like 30 centimeter. And then if you are successful at jamming it, say from 30 kilometers before it hits its target, so it's completely jammed from it reaches the target and 30 kilometers out. Then I pulled some numbers out of my behind here uh, because I really couldn't find it on the internet. So it's just to give you an example of it. Don't trust these numbers. They could be different. Then precision perhaps goes down to 40 plus minus 40 meters if it can be jammed effectively. 30 kilometers from target. I don't think military drones and missiles are easy to jam because this HIMARS missile that Ukraine has used, it has hit its targets every time exactly. And it also uses GPS. And Russia has definitely put up jammers around important installations that they don't want this HIMARS rocket to hit. So, and it still hits them. So I think actually there are ways to work around in a military weapon where you can come around this GPS jamming. I don't think GPS jamming is effective on military applications. You can easily jam, say, mobile the GPS in a mobile phone or a car. But if you have a drone flying or a rocket uh, flying, it could have some systems with it. And I'm just guessing, but it's highly likely that you can uh, aim the antenna just to look for the GPS signals that comes in the direction of space and nothing else. And that means in order to jam it, you would have something that is in between the drone or the missile and uh, space itself where the signal comes from. There's a fourth improvement that I believe SpaceX could do if they were to build the Shahid drone, and that is to use military GPS signal to in increase accuracy to, to one foot and also make it highly unlikely to be jammed. I'm not sure the Iranian version, as it was built in Iran, had these capabilities, both the military. Iran doesn't have their own satellite GPS system, but now they are allied with Russia, and uh, Russia has said, it, that was on the internet, I could find that, that Russia has improved the Iranian version with their own 
military grade GPS so it had a better precision. Um, but of course, SpaceX could do the same thing when they built the drone. And then a uh, fifth improvement that I suggest here for SpaceX to do if they should build the drone is to make a variant of the Shahid drone that can also home in on radar and jamming signals. And if the signal is turned off, it, it will just hit a secondary target instead using GPS. That kind of logic you could build in for very little extra money in the warhead shouldn't cost that much. So let's go on. Another reason why the Shahid drone here is super great is that it can overwhelm any known missile air defenses by sheer number. It only costs 6,000 US dollars to produce each Shahid. So if you spend 6 billion US dollars, you can get a million of them. And even if you use the entire stock of NATO's anti-aircraft missile systems, you would only be able to shoot down about 50,000 Shahid drones. And it's even worse for Russia. They probably only have one third of what NATO got in their stock. And I have some data that can back that claim up. It's this table over here. It shows uh, different kinds of missiles that Russia has been pounding Ukraine with and their stocks of these uh, missiles before the war started. And one of these missiles here is the primary anti-aircraft missile that Russia is using. That's this S-300. It can also be used as a ground-to-ground -ground missile. That's why it's in this table here. But it, it's also the primary Russian anti-aircraft missile. They have only 8,000 of them. And then they have some S-400, probably have a few more thousand of those. And then they have some mid-range and short-range missiles. And yeah, who knows, maybe they have 20,000 of those short and mid-range. But that's what Russia has, all of it. So it can easily be overwhelmed if you build a lot of these Shahids. And another thing about anti-aircraft missiles is that they cost way too much to be used on a thick thousand US dollar drone. Although they can easily shoot down that drone, it's not a problem for them. It's, it's just too much money to spend. For instance, a short range Stinger missile cost 120,000 US dollar and a mid range uh, Nassam missile that's like 20, 30 kilometers range is 1.2 million US dollar. And then uh, the creme de la creme of NATO's air defenses is the Patriot, the US made Patriot missiles. They cost 3 million US dollars, an enormous amount of money. But I also think they can shoot down ballistic missiles that come in really fast from space. And that requires a special missile to shoot that kind of things down. So obviously, if you, if you need to spend at least 20 times more money to shoot down one Shahid missile, or even as in the case of the Patriot missile, you need to spend 500 times more to shoot down just one Shahid. That's not sustainable at all. Plus, you don't have the numbers. Okay, there's also a reason why the Shahid drone is not so great, and that is uh, its slow speed and strong radar signature. So it's easy to target for a missile or an anti-aircraft gun. But we have ruled out the missiles, they're too expensive, so we can't use them really. But we can use anti-aircraft guns, they're far cheaper method to shoot down a Shahid. They'll still cost several thousand US dollars worth of ammunition per drone kill, but uh, that's manageable. And there are two kinds of anti-aircraft guns. One is just a really fast machine gun that's possible to aim precise at the drones when they are within, say, three kilometers distance. And then they shoot a bust of, say, 100 bullets towards the target in, in the hope that some of them will hit the drone critically to down it. And the other kind of anti-aircraft gun is one that uses fewer rounds that are shot at the target. But these rounds have uh, proximity fuses and they can explode when they are, say, 10, 15 meters near the target. Then they explode and put out a, a lot of fragments that will hit the drone and down it. But the Shahid here is uh, able to fly at 4,000 meters altitude. And at that altitude, most uh, anti-aircraft guns cannot reach it. Most anti-aircraft guns has a range of about 3 kilometers. This one I'll show here in this picture is the German Gepard that has actually a range of three and a half kilometers and it has exploding ammunition. I don't think it uses a proximity fuses, but it uses another system of basically timing when the grenade there should explode and that's programmed just before it's shot. 
by the radar system of this Gepard. That's how I think it, it, it works. And it only has 320 rounds, so it's probably enough for 10 drone kills if it's lucky. We should uh, consider how much reaction time does an uh, anti-aircraft gun have before this Shahid drone could hit them, if it targets the uh, anti-aircraft guns. And at 3 kilometers firing range, you have only about one minute for this anti-aircraft gun to destroy the drones, because 3 kilometers is what you will fly if you fly at the maximum speed of this drone in at 185 kilometers per hour. So one attack strategy can simply be to overwhelm an anti-aircraft gun by flying enough uh, Shahid drones towards it so that it cannot shoot all of them down. One of them at least will get to it. And uh, it will still be an important kill for the Shahid drone to take out an anti-aircraft gun because an anti-aircraft gun can cost 10 million dollars. I also have an idea for how SpaceX could further improve a Shahid drone. They can make the attack angle of the Shahid programmable. Instead of flying in a cloud of drones towards the anti-aircraft gun, it will come in from all sides simultaneously, so that exploding rounds from an anti-aircraft gun cannot take out several drones at a time, but at, m at most one drone at a time. And also the tower has to turn around. You can see this tower will have to turn around if they come in from all sides, 360 degrees. It will be much harder to shoot it down by an anti-aircraft gun. So that would be one improvement that SpaceX could definitely make. Now, before we leave this slide, I should show you how it, it works, this anti-aircraft gun in action, because I have a little video here. Let's see it. Here we have the Gepard. The radar is turning. And here it shoots at an airplane that's going up from an airport. And uh, that's how that is. There is actually a third way to shoot these uh, Shahid drone downs, apart from missiles and anti-aircraft guns, and that is to use helicopters or airplanes that have a machine gun mounted to fly after them and then shoot them down again. Because they fly so slow, they can be shot down by a helicopter or an airplane that flies a lot faster. So they can engage the Shahid much earlier than an anti-aircraft gun that only can engage in the last final three kilometers. But these airplanes and, and helicopters can engage the Shahids uh, over the entire flight route. So it, it flies 600 kilometers in principle. It, it, it has three hours to go up there and engage and, and shoot it down. But still, there are one uh, problem uh, with that. There are a couple of problems. Um, Normally, helicopters like this Apache helicopter, that's a flagship attack helicopter in NATO, and then also F-35 here, that's also the flagship uh, fighter in NATO. They only have about 220 rounds of 25 millimeter uh, standard am ammunition, but they fire them really fast, and it's probably enough to shoot down two or three Shahid drones, and then they're out of ammunition. They were not really designed to deal with millions of Shahid drones. They were only designed to shoot down other helicopters or airplanes, and but not drones. So again, NATO needs to prepare for future wars by adapting our helicopters and airplanes so they are much better suited to shoot down drones. They need much bigger magazines here so they can shoot down more. And then there's a problem in Ukraine that has tried to use air helicopters and airplanes to shoot the Shahid down. The problem is, in Ukraine, stuff they have to work with is pretty old. They can only shoot the Shahids down if they attack in daylight, because the pilots require daylight to actually see and aim for these Shahid drones. But the Russians, they're not attacking with daylight with these Shahid drones. They attack at night, and at night they can't see them. Of course, if, if it had been, if Ukraine had NATO standard airplanes and helicopters, they would have equipment that could see the Shahid drones also at night and then have a fair chance to shoot them down. But I found a quote here from a Ukraine military newspaper that reported that each of the types of the MIG 29s, that's the Russian airplane they have in Ukraine army. Onboard weapons has its own shortcomings in, in certain conditions of hunting for Shahids. For example, the onboard 30mm cannon is effectively only if the interception takes place during the day and the Shahid is in line of sight. So they simply can't aim on it uh, during night. So uh, 
that's it. Then I have a lot of sources as usual and you can download it. If you like this video, I'd be grateful if you give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel as that will help me enormously to make better content in the future for you and other people. Also, I'm curious to hear what you think, so don't hold back in the comments section. Thank you for watching my video. I wish you a healthy and fulfilling life in freedom and democracy.